This is your feature debut. How does it feel? How was it going from shorts to this? Well, it feels fantastic, and um, I'm really thrilled and a bit overwhelmed by the reception the film's been getting. You know, it's like the little movie that could, um, but of course delighted and very gratified that so many people are responding. Um, and it felt like a natural progression. I made two shorts, and so I felt pretty ready and prepared. It's something I would highly recommend to filmmakers to cultivate um, their own skills and also team. That was wonderful. Uh, opportunity for me to really meet a group of collaborators and, and develop a rapport over the course of making two shorts so that there was a sense of camaraderie and, and collaboration that was in place. And I know the subject matter in one of your shorts was very similar to this, so did you consider mm -hmm. it a stepping stone in terms of just working on the script, too, and developing the story? Yeah, I, the, um, the second short that I made really inspired this feature. So I didn't make the short with the intention of making a feature at all. But while I was, um, I had the privilege and opportunity to uh, tour festivals with that short film, and every time that I showed it, uh, people in the audience were invariably parents of kids on the spectrum of autism, and they asked if I was going to make it a feature, and I soon started to really hear that they were asking me to make it as a feature. And I began to realize that um, many, many, many people are grappling, wrangling, and suffering. And uh, there's a, a fundamental human need to have your story told, to be seen and heard. And I felt that I was the one to do that. You know, if you can, you must. And I certainly had the skills. And it was also my story. And I needed to share it and tell it. Um, it's not my son's story. It's my story. It's not autobiographical. The circumstances of these characters are different. And my child actually is not severely impacted like the child in this movie. In fact, my son is emerging out of the autism spectrum. He's doing so incredibly well, and that's, it's been a long road uh, for both of us, but it's fantastic. And I feel like that's as important a story to tell as the one in the movie, um, that some kids really can and do, after a lot of work and a lot of intensive help, um, emerge into a very different place, and I think that's important for people to know about autism, because it's a spectrum. There's a wide range. You know, there's some uh, saying that I think is very apt, which is, if you've met one autistic person, you have met one autistic person. Just the way if you've met one person, you've met one person. And what we need to remember is that autistic people are people with autism. People, human beings with all of the individuality and full range of needs and feelings, just a nervous system that has become disorganized in certain ways. And so when we were working on the movie, Ashley Ricard is an extraordinarily gifted young actress who's playing Mandy. We actually went through the script and said, all right, take the autism out. Mandy's just a 16-year-old girl who has certain needs, feelings, and wants. What is she doing in each scene? What is she communicating? What is she really trying to tell her mother? And she's sort of trying to separate and break away and become her own person, as every 16-year-old girl must. But because of the constrictions of her nervous system, it comes out in an unusual way. So nothing was random, nothing was, okay, now you're throwing a fit. It was always, you really need to share this feeling, why, what's going on, what's the context, and this is how it comes out. So where did you bridge that gap, though, be between being a normal 16-year-old and then still getting at what you know from, I mean, your own personal experience, Well, everything too. was from the inside out. You know, I never, ever, ever directed Ashley um, to play a symptom. I wasn't directing a diagnosis. I was directing a character a human being and I feel like the asset that I bring to the project as the mother of a person on the spectrum and somebody who's been actively engaged with the autism community and you know close with many families and this again there's a spectrum so I've known many kids and families where the situation is much more severe than in my own um, and I want to offer that my perspective was that this is a human being and so the nervous system was specific to her too so as we approach that we would focus on quirks and idiosyncrasies that Ashley herself has in her nervous system, just like, for example, I get migraines. So think if you get migraines, you can imagine, oh God, you have a horrible sense of constriction in your head and lights are too bright and noise and smells and you feel very irritated. Well, what if that were your baseline 24 seven and everything just pushed out from there? Before you know it, you're into the world of autism where everything is heightened, the senses are uh, taxed. Um, and so, Ashley uh, went from the inside out and building and using her
her own environment and moment to moment life to respond to it with this heightened way in order to encompass this experience. Sounds like a pretty lengthy process and I'm sure you were working under, you know, a tight timeline and tight budget. So how how did you allocate this time? Well, it, you know, what actually surprising wasn't. Uh, we shot the movie in 14 days. And um, well, first I want to say again, Ashley's enormously gifted. And when she came to the audition, 50% of what you see on screen, she came to the audition with. So she had a lot of um, sensitivity to uh, autism. Her family has a horse farm and they had to program a therapeutic intervention program when she was growing up. So she'd been around autistic kids, she was familiar with it. And, um, and then we had about two months before we started shooting and we met several times and talked and I gave her a bunch of books to read. She had a few herself. Um, she watched a few documentaries, including Autism the Musical, the documentary I helped to produce. And, um, uh, and then, you know, she's just very gifted. So, you know, somebody once said 90% of a director's job is to cast right. The other 10% is to get out of their way. <laughs> I have to remember that. So I had very, very, very capable actors. And I would not have been able to make this movie otherwise because we were on such a tight schedule. This is a true do-it-yourself film. We shot the entire thing, the entire project, from soup to nuts, from pre-production through to completing the final film, cost about $170,000. Right, so when you're making a film with this kinds of constriction, everybody has to be coming in at their A-game. We only had, you know, two takes per shot, sometimes not even. <laughs> and there was no such thing as a bad take, that the work of all the actors, but in particular of Beth Broderick who played the mother and Ashley who played the daughter, was so extraordinary that we could use everything. And we needed to because we had such a limited amount of footage. We were using absolutely everything. One of the things that I did is I kept the camera rolling between takes because sometimes you would find these actors, the, the, the world they were inhabiting, the experience they were having was so intense, they never really were out of character. So even when the actors weren't in a scene, they were still alive. And sometimes we would find moments and expressions that we were capturing in between the scenes that we pulled and could use. So that was important. And another thing that we, we did, because I didn't always call cut right away, um, is that the scenes often continued, and in particular, past the script. Because again, they were so alive in their reality and the truth that they were stepping inside of. There's one particular scene in the movie where um, the daughter comes home from school expecting the reward of ice cream. The mother says, yeah, after dinner, the girl gets very worked up and ends up having a major tantrum. In the script, after she has her tantrum, the scene ends. But they were so alive in it that I didn't say cut. And so the scene continued. And so the whole second half of the movie, of that scene rather, the whole second half of that scene when the girl is in a state of great remorse and the mother comes over to her and apologizes for her part and takes her, you know, escorts her out of the um, out of the house is something that the actors lived out in front of us. And that also speaks to the beauty of our collaboration. Again, the reason to make other films before you embark on your first feature is that the camera department is so genius. They were doing a kind of an intricate dance with the, the actors and so the, in particular, the um, focus puller could just follow them as they moved around, it wasn't that kind of tight jacketed, you know, um, straight jacketed, hit your mark here and there, or you can't move or say a line out of place. I wanted to have um, an environment where the actors could live. And so if they needed to move in a certain place, I mean, basically everything was blocked, you know, this was not a free for all. But there was room to have these kinds of moments of inspiration and spontaneity. I mean, a lot of directors would strive to create this type of atmosphere. Is there any specific thing you had to do to make this kind of, you know, working method jive with having only 14 days to shoot a feature film? Well, in a funny way, it was easier because uh, there's a lot of handheld. Handheld doesn't require a lots of setups. Uh, we shot the film with a lot of kind of all-in-one where I would um, construct the cam a sort of a scenario where the actors would move through the space. So the camera's in a static position and the actors are making it dynamic because they're entering and exiting frame. So that both gave the actors a chance to move and have some spontaneity as well as we could go quickly because we weren't doing... I I'm not a big fan of traditional, you know, master, you know, tight, tight, kind of, you know, over, over uh, 
uh, if there are places where that's necessary, and certainly in the film that does happen, but I, I prefer something that's a little bit more um, off center than that, you know. And so, uh, what we were really striving for, our overall aesthetic, was what we a term we coined as structured naturalism, to have the feeling that you are this is something that's actually happening, and that you're the fly on the wall, and something very gratifying and several reviews said that it was hard to believe this was not a documentary and that was very gratifying to me because I wanted the camera to be quietly observing in a um, uh, an intentional way but uh, I didn't want the filmmaking to get in the way of the experience to just sort of quietly record and support and um, and and capture emotion as opposed to thrust it upon you. That's that's not the kind of film that I was interested in making. And your stars also have a lot to do with that kind of sensation too. I mean, yeah. Ashley's unrecognizable in it. She's yeah. just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And then you have Beth too. Yeah. I mean, do yeah. you attribute some of what they have done to the fact that also you are so engulfed in this kind of situation? Sure. You really know what you're talking about here? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 absolutely. You know, uh, yes, you know, there was, this was, uh, very organic and authentic, and uh, and so we all came to the project with that spirit, and um, and very open collaborative communication. Uh, Beth is a friend of mine. We've been friends for over seven years, and so she uh, was familiar with a lot, including the fact that her sister works with adults on the autism spectrum, and so um, she understands this world and this situation quite well. So everybody was coming with full hearts, with a lot of trust between us, with a lot of collaboration and communication, and uh, and verisimilitude, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, you want to create a very realistic, truthful story, but at the same time, you are making a movie. Absolutely. And I'm not going to lie, some of these things were tough to watch, but, and rightfully so. Yeah, so right. where do you draw the line between right. being realistic and still wanting to entertain? Yeah. Well, again, I think that... Um, it was very gratifying that a number of the reviews pointed out this is an engaging movie, it's funny, you know, it's entertaining. This is not like a one big, ugh, stream and drunk. I couldn't sit through a movie like that. Why would I expect anybody else to sit through a movie like that? <laughs> so, you know, this is a, it, 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 like real life, if I'm trying to create something that's lifelike, well, life has a lot of variation and variety in it. You go through a day and, you know, starts out great, takes a turn, it's quite shitty, then it gets better, you know, hey. So, um, you know, I sort of liken this to a woman putting on, spending two hours to put on makeup to look like she didn't have any on. That it's all very crafted. You know, uh, sometimes and I've, I've had the opportunity to, to teach um, writing, and sometimes young writers will say, oh, but this is just how it happened in real life. Well, so what? You know, I think it was Picasso who said that art is the lie that tells the truth. We're constructing, we're selecting, we're crafting. and. So how do you take your truth, something that you know emotionally to be so, put it into what if circumstances, create characters who are objectively separate from you and apart so that you can shape the clay. And I think that's the task of a, of a storyteller, an artist, of a filmmaker. Um, and yes, the balance was uh, uh, very carefully um, uh, well, well explored because uh, the balance between that discomfort and the intensity of the experience and also um, enough room to breathe. It was one of the reasons that a lot of the times I did have a kind of a witness camera position because the emotions that were on screen were so dense and thick that to be right inside of them would have been overwhelming and also kind of corny. So there was a kind of bounce of, as the film progressed, the shots often became closer so that in the beginning you're just sort of watching this situation, this family, and then you sort of came inside and got to know them better and you were able to be in closer with them too. So that was one of the things that we did visually. And, um, and then in the editing we're able to find out really was just too much. Uh, what, where did we have to you know, either lose a scene or cut it shorter uh, or position it farther. You know, we, uh, there was a you know, major outburst that in the script happened sooner in the story and we pushed it down the line a bit because we needed to spend more time with these characters before we introduced that kind of disruption. So, yeah, but that was a big challenge, as well as the monotony and the um, claustrophobia. So, 
so thank you for recognizing that and and, and keep and, and thank you for uh, for hanging in there <laughs> through the challenge that the film offers to to uh, to reap the rewards I hope and these tactics are really very appropriate for any subject matter in film so yeah. do you plan yeah. to you know branch out from here and tackle some more issues I'm a filmmaker and um, this happened to be the story that I needed to tell at this point I'm not an issue filmmaker, I'm not a documentary maker, and I didn't become a filmmaker in order to tell the story. I am a filmmaker and I told the story. So I intend to continue to, to tell stories. Um, I'm not looking for issues. Um, I'm going to, with help, continue to find and, and write stories that come from my perspective and what I know to be true, not autobiographically, but emotionally. And I've, I've written a new script and we're putting it together now, so I'm hoping that we'll be shooting very soon. Oh, wow. What's that one about? Well, since you've got a young audience here, this <laughs> is interestingly enough, uh, it's called Admissions, and it's a story of a mother and her 17-year-old son going on a college tour, um, and uh, as they visit campuses, they encounter certain people, somebody from her past, somebody in his present, and you see these parallel relationships evolve um, in the context of him entering the adult world at a point when she's kind of questioning what it means to be an adult. So that's uh, that's what I hope will be my next project. So what point in the process are you at now? Pretty far along, pretty far along. You know, I've got the screenplay pretty much set and we're starting to um, talk to financiers and talent. So ah, yeah, yeah, that's We've got exciting. our production team and I hope that we'll, we'll be reassembling the wonderful collaborators that I worked with on Fly Away in terms of, you know, the crew. And uh, which is a great crew. I mean, my uh, DP, editor, camera department, you know, all the, the, the um, producing partner, you know, will all be reassembled.